you want to learn a little logic, the series, part five, argument forms. In the previous screencasts, we introduced logic and discussed some basic concepts, including the informal test for invalidity. We had an introduction where we discussed what logic was and why one should learn it. We introduced the concepts of soundness and validity. We discussed what invalidity was, and finally we had a test for invalidity. In all of these presentations, we have looked at logic from an informal perspective. That will now change. In the next section, we will introduce formal logic. Let's start by looking at the following arguments. If it is raining, then it is cloudy. It is raining, therefore it is cloudy. If the trade gap narrows, the deficit will rise. The trade gap narrows, therefore the deficit will rise. And finally, if you recycle your cans, you will feel warm and fuzzy. You recycle your cans, therefore you will feel warm and fuzzy. These are all examples of natural language arguments. Their content is different, but their form, that is their logical form, is the same. If A, then B. A, therefore B. So, it is raining, A, then it is cloudy, B. It is raining, A, therefore it is cloudy, B. If the trade gap narrows, A, the deficit will rise, B. The trade gap narrows A, therefore the deficit will rise B. And finally, if you recycle your cans, that's if A, then you will feel warm and fuzzy B. You recycle your cans A, therefore you will feel warm and fuzzy B. What we have pinpointed in these arguments is called the argument form. A natural language argument has both content and form, whereas an argument form abstracts away from the content and preserves only the logical structure. It has only form. Try to figure out the logical argument form for the following arguments. You either have the coffee or the tea. You don't have the tea, therefore you must have the coffee. The prize is behind door number one or door number two. It isn't behind door number two, therefore it must be behind door number one. And he meets us in the alley or on the corner. He doesn't meet us on the corner, therefore he meets us in the alley. The argument form for these arguments is A or B, not B, therefore A. So looking at the first example, you have either the coffee or the tea. Here, having the coffee is A and the tea is B. You don't have the tea, not B, therefore you must have the coffee, A. The prize is behind door number one, A, or door number two, B. It isn't behind door number two, not B. Therefore, it must be behind door number one, A. He meets us in the alley, A, or on the corner, B. He doesn't meet us on the corner, not B. Therefore, he meets us in the alley, A. Here is a slightly more challenging set of arguments. Try to determine the argument form. If you read this book, it opens your mind. Your mind is not open, therefore you did not read this book. Provided that Bob likes potatoes, he will like your dinner. He doesn't like your dinner, therefore he doesn't like potatoes. And it only rains when it is cloudy. It is not cloudy, therefore it is not raining. Give it a shot. The argument form for these arguments may be expressed in several ways. If A, then B, not B, therefore not A. If you read this book, A, it opens your mind, B. Your mind is not open, not B, therefore you did not read this book, not A. All of these arguments have this form. However, you could also express the argument form as since A, B, not B, therefore not A, or A only when B, not B, therefore not A. 
all of these answers are equally correct. Logicians often prefer the if A then B formulation, but the argument forms we've given are all equivalent in the sense that they express the same logical pattern. Why bother looking at the logical argument form as opposed to just an argument in natural language? Well, it turns out that natural language has ambiguity inherent in it. If we look at an argument in a naturally occurring language, naturally occurring being a language such as English, French, or Ojibwe, partly as a result of the riches of natural languages, ambiguities tend to crop up. Consider the following. I have a banana and an apple. Press the button, and an alarm will sound. In the first statement, the word and functions as a conjunction. That is, the statement is true if I have both an apple and a banana. In the second statement, the word and functions completely differently. In fact, it is difficult to know what its function is. Perhaps we are looking at a sign that contains a warning, or an enticement. If the button is pressed, then an alarm will sound. This use of and is quite different from the first. One of the virtues to which logicians aspire is clarity. In order to achieve a high level of clarity in argument forms, we eschew natural language and instead use an artificial language. In this artificial language, we are only allowed to use the following words or phrases to express our argument forms, and they always have the same meaning. And, as in, I like marshmallows and I like cake, or, as in, you must take math or French to graduate, if then, as in, if this is a triangle, then it has three sides, not, as in, your claim is not clear, and if and only if, as in, you may come to the party if and only if you are a member of the club. Try to come up with the argument form for the following arguments. First, if the government rigs the elections, there will be riots. If there are riots, the government will fall. Therefore, if the government rigs the elections, the government will fall. Second, if Homer did not exist, it follows that the Odyssey was written by a committee or by a woman, but it was not written by a woman, so it was written by a committee. And third, the players will go back to work if agreement is reached about their salaries, but this will be achieved only if some of them take early retirement, so the players will not go back if some of them do not retire early. A properly expressed argument form will have nothing other than the placeholders, A, B, C, and so on, and the words and phrases which we have defined as logical connectives, and, or, if, then, not, if, and only if. Remember that the words or phrases must be intact wholes. Only if cannot stand by itself. You must have if, or if and only if. And no placeholder can implicitly contain any of the words or phrases designated as logical connectives. By convention, we have been using therefore as the beginning of the conclusion. We will begin the next screencast by looking at the argument forms of these arguments.